Thank you, Swamiji. This is nothing short of amazing. What I also do want to point out is if you really want to do good, not just in, in terms of charity and, and stuff, but we also see in the world of business, there are many ways people actually come together. And it does not necessarily need a very structured mechanism of working. So the entire world of especially software open source, that works with people who do not know each other and has been working like that for the last about 30, 35, 35 years now. In this case, in our case, as we're talking about human values. So st sticking on with human values, picking up a so-called management term again, uh, Dr. Rajan, in your case, leadership. So Suhas, uh, I honestly was not given any leadership role in the beginning. And uh, I mean, I, it, you're not appointed as a leader. You just start doing things, you know. And uh, it's so nice, as Simanji was saying, when you lead by example, we had we had a shortage of resident doctors and uh, the COVID wards were supposed to be manned by respiratory general medicine and critical care. And we were short and the numbers were just increasing. And suddenly we decided we will just get the other specialities in plastic surgery, gynecology, ophthalmology. And, and these people had no work that time. Uh, and so when they saw us working, they started joining in my neurology consultant colleague. Can you believe it? When he saw me working, he, he rung me up and he said, I know you're short of resident doctors. Can I work as a resident doctor for you? The consultant. And I told him, look, don't you don't be a resident. You just be a, one of the consultants on call. That itself will be a big favor to us. But uh, you were asking about children. I think the only way we can teach our children is by setting an example ourselves. And that's why sometimes when these calls happen, as Swamiji was saying, everyone is listening at home. And the children are also listening how I'm listening uh, to, to patients. So they also pick up a few things, I'm sure. Uh, as they say, 90% of communication is listening and not actually keeping on telling the patient what to do. Uh, ask, and going back to supportive care, if you have to lead there, you have to understand what the patient's problem is. And we have had patients who, who, who just come and tell me where I've called the supportive care consultant in. And after the patient is eight days in the hospital, the supportive care consultant says that this patient is just having a bad family life. He's got a messed up family life, which nobody has picked up. So just listening to what that and how that is actually creating most of the problems of the patient. And so you can only lead your juniors by actually listening to patients and sitting down. Patients hate doctors whose hand is on the doorknob and who's, who are in a hurry to leave the room. Uh, they want someone who will listen. And when you sit and listen, your students also get that message that maybe we should also listen and find out what the patient's actual problem is. You may have got admitted in the lung unit, but you may be having a problem completely unrelated to the lung. Mm. Could be financial, could be domestic, could be social. But I think that's what leadership is all about, just setting that example and then everything flows. I mean, now we have plastic surgeons, urologists, renal specialist telling us we are learning COVID. I mean, I joke with them, you want to start a respiratory clinic <laughs> on the side, uh, you're welcome to, you know. But it, it's it's taught us to bond together, Suhas, and we met so many people on Zoom calls with all the resident doctors whom I've never met in the hospital. Otherwise, they would all come and say, we're we are happy doing this. We feel there's some purpose in it. And we were one of the few hospitals where the resident doctors didn't really grumble too much about salary hikes, you know. They knew they were there for a purpose. And though there was a group of them asking for it, it's sort of, you know, when we said, look, there's a much larger purpose here. You know, the salary hikes will come later. We appreciate the work you're doing, the help you're doing. And uh, I think right now with this way it is in Mumbai, it's taught us so much. Health literacy has improved in patients. The value of time has increased like anything. Suddenly patients have realized the value of time and just talking to a doctor on the phone, get your points that you want to ask in advance. Don't waste time. Don't waste your time and the doctor's time. Let's get to the 
you know, uh, specifics and move on. So those kind of things have, have really changed. Two people coming into my room. There used to be six relatives with a patient entering the room with six different set of questions crowding the room. So now we say, let two people come in, talk to them. They will pass them. If they ask the specific questions, pass it on to the rest of the family. If there's a whole family that wants to come in, you're welcome on the Zoom call. There's no, there's no, there's no crowding there. There's no crowding. But, and and I, as you said, one person who's sensitized uh, to something good done talks to many more people. Uh, and, and you suddenly don't realize how small the world has become, whether it's India or out of the country, people are listening in. And it's a Zoom conversation from anywhere, any family member can come in and say, you know, that's that's what I think um, uh, I we need to do from here on. So that really helps. I don't know if, if you've had that experience, Simanji, with, uh, with families who have been, you know, migrant families. I'm just trying to wonder how it would be in water. The volume you have dealt with is is much more than what we have dealt with. We have dealt with about ten thousand odd patients in two hospitals. But this is this is a mind boggling number, I think. Yeah, Simanji, if I were to take that, and uh, thank you, Dr. Rajan, for the first that is, is it's just I just continue to remain amazed, and more and more as as we progress. Simanji, as I was mentioning earlier, now your situation during that time was slightly different from what it is today. Today, you have a force which is working with you, under you, as in a line of command. That time, being IGP admin, you could not have had so many so many policemen so, uh, working. How do, how do you influence? All, I remember from, from that time, all police stations, stations in Bangalore were, were sort of getting coordinated. And I remember these WhatsApp conversations with, with you where you would say, so go and speak with SHO of, the, of that police station or inspector so and so co coordinate how to drop the stuff, stuff off. H how do you influence people who are not in your chain of command? Yeah, uh, first I'd like to talk to about doctor what you asked. Uh, see, you may be the numbers may be less, but you have a very, very different role. Very, very doctors are really like uh, in this situation, like uh, whether it is any specialist. These doctors are the persons who are like the god, I can just tell. They, you are the real warriors. I, I just hats off to all the doctors of the entire, uh, anywhere they are working. Because see, I was just, when you were telling me. Simanji, if I can interrupt you, you know, I used to get tired of this thing, frontline warriors. True. You know, you go during the lockdown driving and see all the police force out on the roads. And you know, the ward boy suddenly in the hazmat suit, yeah, no differentiation between ward boy, nurse, and consultant. I mean, everyone looks the same, you know. And suddenly, you realize how equal this world is. You know? That's yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that's that's that level playing field. <laughs> no, but uh, the, I was just very like uh, totally engrossed in listening to you because see, these are things like we are totally helpless. You are the only boss. Doctors are the boss. Whatever they say, we listen. And more we listen, we try to help and tell other people. See, as far as my role was concerned, uh, I just like briefly to tell you, it was in three parts. I'll tell you. One, uh, three parts of my actual work. And first is about the difference between my role as an IG administration and now as I am the IG central range. Central range is, I have six districts under me, which is surrounding Bangalore city. So I am the range IG of six districts. So basically, I deal directly with the police station. The police stations report to the inspectors, inspector to DYSP, DYSP to SP, and SP reports to me. So I have these stations, these officers, and all. As you told, chain of command is there very much with me. So I have a huge force, which like I just order and the things will happen. Especially, but that time I was doing a desk work. I was dealing with the. It was an. I was basically the HR head of this police force. Means I, I was reporting to my DG. Uh, but uh, I was dealing with desk work, which was totally cut off from this type of thing. But you know, as things came up, I was lucky enough. I told you I was working in the city, so I knew the setup, and I knew personally the officers. And it was done on personal. I should first call the officer. I said, look, if any police problem is there, you do that first. Then what I am telling you do it. So initially, for around seven to ten days, I had to talk to each one of them, depending on the area where I had to work about what what they have to do 
and after 10 days it became a systematic thing so i'll just tell you this work which i did was in three parts the major part was about this work food distribution second is about the movement when the train started moving so sending the workers the migrant workers and in the train we have another part that is the third part and that is the other people who were stranded here we had a whole lot of people means it was like bangalore is a city where people come for medical treatment for the it hub it is there the uh, students are there so they were the other set of people who were also stuck so these three things i like to tell how we uh, went about it so major workers were the now who what happened immediately as swami ji told earlier the government scheme started they started distributing food prepared food and in Bang bangalore you have a whole lot of these uh, caterers just like in mumbai you have no these uh, catering business is very uh, prominent here and all these caterers and these you know they started coming up with their banners and started making food and distributing in fact i used to see that by force they used to give no no tum khao khao so they have prepared food no so they have to give so that was like thing is you are doing only the major cbd area the central business district areas what about the outer areas what about them? and then when i started getting these calls and i'll just tell you how i this call started coming i helped a group of 400 workers who were stranded in one place they called up some person in bihar and that person happened to be a very very senior judge of the high court and he he was from some particular village so he said okay this and then they got hold of my number and through some contact they said look there are 400 workers here i can you help them so i said see 400 workers will be i don't think so in bangalore we have that situation it may be some exaggeration because 400 cannot be in one location still you give me the number i'll talk to him so i only called up for my personal number and i asked him in proper and then he said yes he told me the location this that and all i said how come 400 of you are in one place so he was not able to explain to me but subsequently with my police help i found out that they were on the national highway in a godown type location warehouse type where they were in batches escaping in lorries you know that in media and all it had come that they were going in tankers and containers and all no escaping that area so some professional brokers had come up and they were charging them 500 1000 2000 rupees to put them into these containers so they were going and then suddenly this uh, news and all of uh, lorries they are taking them became viral all over india so police became very strict we started checking vehicles and all so this 400 got stranded they were also in the move their other people had you know, these fellows got stuck up and they had nothing they they were basically from different places stranded there no food so i provided them lunch it was laughter on them i uh, somehow through some connection i sent them ready made prepared food uh, in packs so they said okay theek hai hum to khali sir aage kya hoga i said aage kya i mean i i, I was shocked i said what aage ka aap to sir kuch nahi hai hamare paas hum to idhar aa gaye ab aap train bhi nahi chala rahe bus nahi chala rahe ab kya mar jayenge then uh, i knew some ngos so in fact iskon was doing some uh, ready made they were preparing some this thing so i had a total discussion with them all on phone calls and all and i really uh, means begged before them they see okay if you have something ready you please provide otherwise there will be a problem to my luck i had a direct contact with swami ji there he provided about 300 odd means the number of people on there we gave them boxes of these kits these kits were having like 5 kg rice dal Uh, oil everything a ration for carrying on for 21 days this was a sample kit which is con had made just a few days back and they were about to launch it through the government mechanism so they said no no sir this has not been launched this is unofficial i am telling you i said okay i'll pay for it but i have got a demand people are they know that i have helped them and now they want it so somehow i don't know it it clicked and i sent 400 boxes in two lorries to them when it went there you know the the innocence of these people they had they were exactly 376 people so they distributed and i was completely every time telling them dekho distance rakhna saath mein nahi lagna jhagda mat karna and i sent only one staff with that lorry but they said nahi sir aap chinta mat karo hum bana liya they showed me photographs they they were on video call with me ye dekho sab aise line kiya hai koi jhagda nahi hoga 376 they divided distributed and 24 extra box they sent back is aap kisi ko de do so this was the this was the like genuine thing no i was 
moved. Then that my constable told staff told us, sir, they are sending back 24 boxes. I said, no, no, you give it to them only. Because see, that itself becomes a problem for me. Where to boom? <laughs> <laughs> what do I do? He said, let them eat more air, give it to them. So these fellows, they were shocked that in the afternoon they got lunch. In the evening they got boxes. One of the boxes was costing costing 800 rupees. Okay. So 400 of that boxes went. Now they started telling here and there among their friends, among their relations, among their whatever that look, this is the number. So they started giving numbers. This number, if you call, there is some officer. They don't know who I am. Like that. It went, it went to Bihar and uh, Kolkata and Ranchi and it became, it got published in the local newspaper, my number. That look, this is an officer there. They, some people knew I, that I am an IG. Some people thought that I am a helpline number. Like that it started spreading. So this is one angle of my number getting viral. And then what I used to do, I used to send, we have these PCR vans. Like you have everywhere, no? these gypsies and also we have uh, this uh, Ertiga vehicles in Bangalore city, which uh, patrol the areas. So what I used to do, like whichever calls I used to get, these vans used to take these boxes and give it to that area without compromising on their police duty. So it is like it is not a medicine. Uh, it, medicine has to go immediately, but food can go by afternoon, by evening also. That was the rule. So if you go in that area, you take it. And I used to get calls. I used to cut and paste that number and send it to that SHO of that station. That look, this number ten persons. This number, five persons, like that. And I knew the entire Bangalore city, each and every area, because I had worked as an addition commissioner. So I knew once or twice I used to get confused because they themselves used to confuse me. Because the person who is calling me, they don't know exact area. So this number is to go to that SHO. Then SHO now think is how does he organize the food? Because he cannot give from his own pocket or this, you know. So what used to happen like a surplus of boxes I used to provide to major uh, the demand areas. We had some pockets where a lot of demand was there. So every time my donors used to give me 100 boxes, 200 boxes, 1000 boxes, I used to give it to those areas. But the lockup rooms became our godowns. All the lockup rooms of the police station. <laughs> we, were, we had photographs of that. So we used to keep the, these boxes there. And uh, slowly, slowly, what happened? Like, if someone has got my number, this police goes and gives them. The next uh, house fellow asked, so they will call like that thing. So it started spreading because it in slum areas, police going and giving food packets. That is these ration packets. So it became a news that okay, no, you call up this number or tell or, or my police were also very smart. Till Mera Sahab bolega to like that. You know, <laughs> like that initially it started. Then slowly, slowly, I told that officers also started thinking, look, my senior officer is doing like this. Why can't we also do it? So they started logging on to it. And then on their own resources, they started mobilizing things. And like uh, Suhas was one of, also one of our donors that they used to pressurize me in the morning. I used to get a WhatsApp call, so 100 packets ready. Where do I send it? Then I used to see my I had chart there. Then I used to say, OK, you send it there. So I'll just share my SHO's number with him. So that was it. I'll share my SHO's number. I'll share his number with SHO. And they used to organize it. So like that, it started going, going, and then the boxes, like uh, the calls which I got, it went into thousands. And about more than one lakh people I could provide, for which all the call records I started maintaining. So every day, 24 hours, which I numbers I used to get. Next day, when I used to come to my office, I used to just forward all these entire thing to my uh, staff, my office uh, PA. We will take it down and put it in an Excel sheet so that I have details of who called me and to this place, how it went. So in the evening when like suppose uh, Suhas gets, uh, some worker gets from Suhas. So Suhas will get a WhatsApp photo that yes, his food has been distributed in this area. This thing. So there was a direct link. There was no uh, uh, broker or any third person involved. And best part is like I was getting calls that people were telling, sir, I'm bahar ke hai, idhar am idhar ka idli wada, sambar nahi khata hai. So then I used to impress it upon the administrative missionary also because I was in touch with the senior IS officers who were dealing with it. So I told them, I said, see, your distribution of prepared food will go waste. And they had this sense, like there was a very uh, emotional example of one uh, fellow who was waiting in line, queue system of the, uh, through the government mechanism, they used to give prepared food. No? 
he he was there and he when his turn came he got one one meal he said i have two more my wife is pregnant and my small child is in the house so they said no no unko leke aao so this fellow became emotional and he left this food also and he called me ki saab hum itna ek ghanta se khade the khana bhi de gaya ek deta hai nahi khayenge mar jayenge like that no you know like a small child no i said nahi babu mat tension nahi karo tumko denge tumhara number aa raha hai na usko teen khana denge but then i realized that you giving prepared food and how can we make so much food it gets wasted distribution is a problem safe distancing all those so dry rations became a hit and people we never demanded money like uh, there was a member of parliament from ranchi only he, he read it in news for i am doing this he called me he said you give your bank account number i i want to donate i said sir i have not uh, i have not opened any account for this then he said i want to distribute i want to contribute how do i do it so then he gave it to an ngo here he online is send money so like this all the there was curfew no pass system like swami ji told about the passes it was a very valid point so because we as a police officer we don't require passes so that was an advantage with us all the shops are closed so what we did like bigger shops with metro even demart and all the bigger department stores we gave them these sample kits and whoever wanted to donate 10000 50000 1 lakh whatever directly online will give it to that demart or shop and there commensurate with that value they will make boxes ready and the local officer will just pick it up like they used to uh, suhas used to operate from yashanpur i suppose monday that area so every area we had some people who are doing it like that so there was no financial dealing tomorrow we see we are in government job tomorrow things will like uh, swami ji will appreciate this fact you are you have a system of accounting where you uh, take donations you can account for it. we don't have any i need permission to do all those things but this was off the record i was doing so tomorrow no one should point out figure not only on me on the entire police system so i impressed upon all up to my constables and all don't take donations from anyone if they want to give they should give by kind so like this we started accumulating and gave it so this was the first part second part is about the train movement it was a huge huge hurdle and task and we learned uh, the way in delhi and mumbai there was some problem in the railway station where there was lathi charge and all so when the trains were there we had a very excellent system where 50 kilometers away from bangalore city we started operating the trains we didn't operate the train from the city center so we had a very nice evacuation plan where the workers didn't know who will go which day but everyone was sure that suddenly buses will come and take them so 50 buses for one train this was the ratio and we as officers knew that today this area will be evacuated today state wise today odisha from this area today bengal from this area like that and it was known to us only and we used to get put those 50 buses pick them up at the early morning provide them breakfast get them screened for uh, with thermometers and med- medical screening by lunch give them lunch there there itself in the evening trains used to move we used to send them all these buses in a convoy out of the city so there was no panic because no one knew from where the trains are going unlike in mumbai and all where the rumors spread that look trains will start from this station so that way they were in panic they used to call me the helpline number anyone in fact uh, finally like one it was interesting one fellow thought that i am a railway some ticket person in railway so he is telling saab kuch karke tu adjust karo saab mere paas to aadmi hai mere liye kuch kar do so i said theek hai kuch karte hain i mean i was i was enjoying with him तो किधर मिलोगे साहब स्टेशन में लगा या स्टेशन में जाओ करके और नंबर पे ना आई गिव दैट नंबर टू माय इंस्पेक्टर यू कैटोल ऑफ दिस फेलो हु इज दिस फेलो हाउ कम ही इज होल्डिंग हंड्रेड फेलोस सो बेसिकली दे वर चार्जिंग 500000 रुपीस नो दिस टाउट्स नो ब्रोकर्स एवरीथिंग सी पीपल मिसयूज द सिचुएशन सो इट वाज लाइक अ हेल देन वी गॉट आउट ऑफ सम टाउट्स दे इज टू लॉटर अराउंड दिस प्लेसेस सो गेटिंग दिस वर्कर्स आउट वाज अ बिग इशू then this i told about the third part about these educated people there were there were some people like i still remember they had come down as a tourist some had come down to this of narayan hotel is the that uh, medical facility where many people from the uh, northeast bengal and all they come for operations then we have a fifth sai baba world uh, center where they did free of cost all the operations so these people had got operated and they were staying there and they had no trains to go back so what we did like we sent our officers to those lodges those hotels after taking the list from these hospitals 
that in the recent times how many have got operated and then with every train we had 24 coaches 22 will go for workers two coaches for these type of people now the main cap problem is it's just like see because the entire city is blocked there is no cab no bus no train nothing how do these people come out of that area and where are they we don't know there was a system of registration you must have heard that for pan india we had this registration of people being done so we used to get their phone number we used to call them okay for jharkhand this is registered where are you staying is a student i used to organize buses and jeeps from my police wing and they used to pick them up and take them and take to the station so they still keep calling me sir you are god for us means not me means entire police because they were clueless there is no cab they can't call someone ola uber or or anyone to go so and and there is there is a curfew so but they had to come out so like that we started putting them in this thing in fact uh, uh, ramkrishna mission uh, students about six of them they were in a place in kundapur in udupi district that is in on the west coast a new school is coming up on a 40 acres campus it's in a jungle area so i got a call from there also i had a very nice photograph to small i think so six uh, eight or ninth standard students so the swami ji has brought them so he is continuously in touch with me it is a 14 hour journey from there to bangalore and i was in touch with him because that train like everyone thought that this is the last thing this is the last train so they have to put it on so these type of thing we used to do so somehow with the, and then we give them food everything in fact one of these students his father was so sorry sir my son has just got message he has to go there immediately you didn't give time he doesn't have pp kit he doesn't have mask and all that then for that boy especially i found out who is he i told my inspector you go and give him one kit and tell him to talk to his father from there so he was so happy you know he was very very perturbed he said shall i wait for another train i said say i cannot guarantee trains are being run by the central government it's just like we are organizing and putting you in into it so it was like um, thing, and i was managing it because my all officers started saw to it like they were seeing me how i am doing it so they also started learning from it and uh, they were getting a kick and because there was no crime that time luckily to our luck the crime rate had come down and uh, the workload was less so we could concentrate on this however as situation uh, progressed we had this problem of covid becoming a major fear then we started getting setbacks and then we had a lot of casualties among our police also so that was the next part this is the short story thank you so much thank so you awesome. so much sir sivan ji i have a specific question uh, for uh, dr rajan dr rajan so this, some questions have actually come in which i am melding into one so the questions essentially are around very specifically around covid what are the myths around covid 19s related immunity and till the vaccine comes out as and when it, when it does what are the pieces of advice that you would give so quickly suhas uh, uh, myths about immunity is that you know you're not permanently immune after you get infection you have not everyone develops antibodies and i think we should be careful even after we get covid with the three key issues which is hand washing uh, distancing and masks that that has to continue regardless of whether you've had it or not the other myth is that the vaccine will be 100% protective my colleague at the am hospital in mumbai is a principal investigator on the vaccine study she has finished recruiting for the trial uh, and the blood collections for antibodies will be at 3 months and 6 months two doses at 0 days and 28 days uh, we'll probably have results by early next year but again any flu vaccine that i have come across and that we have been using for the years prevents flu by about 40 to 50%. So even though it's not 100%, it's still something. So it's worth vaccinating vulnerable populations for sure, especially pregnant women. If you're asking me about the myths of covid, there are two myths that I think uh many people should know. And I know we have a small group here listening in that uh I if they can spread the message about unnecessary CT scans, I I just hope that I I get opinions with two and three ct scans done we hardly do any ct scans and we do them only when the patient is really unwell and we are looking for clots uh, so or or bad fibrosis in the lung otherwise 95% of covid patients are going to have some abnormality on their scans so ct scans should not be unnecessarily done i think 
I, I saw in Maharashtra they opened up a free CT scan center in Bandra Kurla complex for anyone with a COVID positive swab. I thought that was ridiculous. I wrote to Times of India and said that this is you have to question this because if you are COVID positive, you don't need a scan. And if you're COVID negative and you suspect COVID, then you may want to do a scan. And and so if you're COVID positive, why are you doing free CT scan? So it's a waste of resources and people keeping a CT scan center there for free scan. So so many these kind of mis misconceptions abound. Use of steroids. Steroids are reserved for severe COVID patients requiring oxygen in the ICU and wards, not for outpatient use. There are no infections. We use steroids. They reduce mortality in very severe COVID, and this message should also get across. I think these are the few misconceptions on COVID that I hope get to a larger audience. Thank you, Dr. Rajan. I have one other, one last question, which we'll like, I think, do the uh, round one more time. Because maybe starting with you, Swamiji, from your point of view, what, because of all that you handle, either the logistics or technology or, or uh, the pandemic, pandemic as a whole, were there any personal learnings? Yeah, definitely. Such a big experience. Uh, there are a lot of personal learnings. Uh, may I just interrupt? I have one question for Dr. Sujit. Please. Uh, you see, uh, I think during COVID, a lot of human values were put to test. Yeah. And uh, uh, one of the very, uh, you know, because of this COVID phobia, I will call it, any person who was uh, tested positive, uh, he was isolated and uh, there was a lot of uh, social stigma which yeah. was attached to them. In fact, I saw a lot of uh, um, uh, psychological stress in such patients. Even families I saw, if a person got yeah. positive immediately, uh, they were you know put in one corner and I don't know what happened in the cities. I am in an area where the darwars are very strong. It, these are called, uh, the panchayats are called here darwars. Sure. And uh, the whole family used to get uh, isolated. They will put a red ribbon, say nobody should enter this area. Even if the families came out, they used to, they used to shout, you get inside. As if, you know, it's a virus which will spread through air and, you know, catch like fire, wildfire. So that kind of thing we saw. In fact, my own campus was declared a micro containment zone also. Okay. And uh, we have personal experience also about that. Now, these are some facts one side and when the uh, when our campus was made into a micro containment zone and results came out of maybe 500 of our staff they were tested 11 or 12 became positive okay they were definitely isolated but one funny thing which i observed and later on i kept on observing was that the COVID, when a person, what uh, my understanding is that the person, when he becomes declared COVID positive, he would have got this COVID uh, virus um, at least four, five, or six days earlier, because he first uh, develops some symptoms, and if he's not an asymptomatic person and is mild, generally they don't come. Only when it is severe, they go to a hospital, they find out testing is done, then results come, then they are tested positive. So it is already six, seven days are already lapsed. Yeah. So when they come back, the moment he's positive, immediately the whole village say that you segregate him and all that. But last seven, eight days, where were they? Nobody's bothered about it. Sure. So I saw families where husband is positive, the whole family is negative. Now, when we say that it is spreading through contact, and the family members are negative. My own cook was positive and all of us, all the monks were negative. There are n number of cases, I'll tell you. So th this person staying in the same house and here people are really poor. If you go to interiors, they stay in single room, seven, eight in a family. One of them is positive. Mother is positive. Elders are also negative. Young children are also negative. Everybody is negative. I'm at my wit's end to understand how the contact tracing is really helping one. Yeah. And second, how really by contact it, in, it is being spread. And even if it is being spread, to me, it looks like a simple uh, viral disease. We catch, you know, cold is also a viral disease. 
Now, if a if a person, somebody in your family catches cold, we don't isolate him, we don't stigmatize him. We in fact give more care, more love, more food, more nutrition to a person who is suffering. Sure. Uh, not not make that person into a psychological wreck. Sure. So what sure. would you like to say about this? Sure, sure. But I will definitely answer this question. I think it's very relevant. It is like the common cold in a majority of the patients, but because Swamiji. It has had complications in 10 to 20 percent of patients have landed up in hospital and about 10 to 20 percent of those have had severe complications. People have been a little more guarded and the vulnerable population, I would say, is more at risk. Everyone doesn't get it. And the point of testing in the whole period of the illness is very, very important. So someone could test positive one month after the illness. And that doesn't mean he's either having active infection, neither can he pass it on to others. Uh, and another person can be negative, but could test positive five days later because he's got the infection that day. So it's, it's really tricky there. But what I would say as a rule of thumb is that once symptoms come up, you are most infectious about three days before the symptoms began to about five days after the symptoms started. And that applies to the common cold and the, the flu as well. So that's a period that you would like to isolate, but definitely not isolate to an extent where you cannot communicate, you know, and I think that has gone taken a different uh, connotation, especially with elderly people who have become so worried they're not stepping out and they've actually become more lonely, more depressed because of that. I think somewhere we need to strike that balance. I think we have done it reasonably well in India. If you look at our numbers, uh, and the way we are doing overall, I think we've done a good job. Unfortunately, you don't get uh, compliments from across the world for the type of job we do in India. We get more criticism, but we're not looking for compliments. But I think overall in the country, uh, we're, we're being as sensible as we can be considering our literacy levels. Uh, but this part is very important. You can be positive for three months after infection and it's just viral RNA there is no need to panic. And the only reason sometimes you need is if your workplace needs a negative swab to come back to work uh, or if your uh, uh, hospital has to move you to a non-COVID area, then you need a repeat swab. Otherwise, we don't even do repeat swabs. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Sujit. Uh, Pleasure. Pleasure. So, Haas, is it okay if I take like, yeah, uh, yeah. a... I, 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 th I think we are uh, way over time. It just, this was the <laughs> conversation was so absolutely engrossing. So maybe we could just come come to a close. I uh, do want to thank the three of you speakers. It's it's just been amazing having this conversation, and I too hope it's been the same uh, for our attendees, the audience as well. With that, let's come to come to a close till we chat again. Namaste and Jai Hind. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you so much. Nice, lovely meeting all of you. Thank you.